The glass sponge reefs off the coast of British Columbia are vast islands of three-dimensional habitat in an otherwise featureless seascape. They form peaks, valleys, and towering cliffs that rise up to heights of 20 meters, and like icebergs, they can extend even further below the surface of the seafloor than above it. Reef-forming glass sponges need hard surfaces to grow on and are unable to settle on the soft seafloor. When sponges die, sediments carried by currents and tides accumulate on them, cementing together large mounds of skeleton that serve as the hard surface needed for new sponges to settle. Little is known about when these glass sponges reproduce. Embryos found inside adult glass sponges indicate that, like other sponges, they form larvae, tiny millimeter-sized offspring. During reproduction, adults release sperm into the water and retain eggs inside their bodies. Sperm is captured by neighboring sponges, and the fertilized eggs develop into larvae, which are released to swim in the water before settling and growing into adults. Genetic studies on glass sponges in the Strait of Georgia suggest that glass sponge larvae disperse over long distances. Water currents probably guide their movement, and where they settle may be influenced by the presence of other sponges in the area. Because glass sponges do not move, where larvae settle is permanent and determines the shape and location of the reefs. How freely do glass sponge larvae swim in the water, and what determines where they settle? These questions are key to understanding how the reefs continue to grow and how new glass sponge reefs form. The three glass sponge species known to form reefs are the cloud sponge, Aphrocalistes vastus, the finger goblet sponge, Heterocone calyx, and the bush sponge, Ferrea oca, which comprises the majority of the reefs. A host of other animals also live among the reefs, including non-reef forming sponges, rockfish, many crab species, sea stars, octopuses, skates, and nudibranchs. Hidden beneath the surface of these complex habitats, there are also diverse, miniature ecosystems of creatures living in between the folds and crevices of the sponges, but their small size and sheltered homes make it difficult to understand how diverse they are. To study these hidden ecosystems, we collected adult Ferrea oca reef sponges from the glass sponge reefs during a recent research expedition. There were nearly 450 small invertebrates living on the bodies of four melon-sized sponges alone. Of particular interest are the almost 100 young sponges we found, all but five of them attached to dead sections of Ferrea oca, and as many as 40 found on a single sponge. Most are demo sponges, but some have the distinctive skeletal structure of extremely young glass sponges. Young sponges were found at several different stages of growth, indicating that multiple settlement events may have happened as little as a few months before we collected them. Among the miniature reef inhabitants we found, there were over 150 small encrusting bryozoans that attached to dead sections of sponge to form tubed, moss-like colonies that filter food out of the water. Almost 100 microscopic shell-bearing foraminifera were found on both live and dead sponge tissue. Many polychaete worms built solitary tube-like houses directly on sponge skeletons. And isopods. Young clams. A scallop. And a marine snail were also found. With almost 450 animals living on four Ferrea oca, we found that it is not uncommon for a single reef sponge to provide habitat to over a hundred small animals, and that one sponge can be a home for at least 40 smaller sponges. With innumerable large glass sponges comprising the scaffolding of the reefs, the potential diversity of small animals using the glass sponge reefs as habitat is enormous. Glass sponge reefs are truly an oasis of life, a habitat, nursery, and refuge. You can learn more about sponges and the glass sponge reefs at our website.